Hello guys! Today let's talk about ControlNet and have a detailed look at the original paper, Adding Conditional Control to Text-to-Image Diffusion Models. So, what is ControlNet? Nowadays, with current pre-trained large diffusion models, we can generate photorealistic images with only text prompts. For example, with a prompt dog in a room, we can get different images with different kinds of dogs in different poses. What if I want a more specific output? Say, I want a dog in a pose just like the sketch. This is exactly what ControlNet can do. ControlNet is an end-to-end -end architecture to control pre-trained large diffusion models to support additional input conditions. It's robust on a small dataset. Training can be as fast as fine-tuning a diffusion model. It can be trained on personal devices and, of course, can scale to large amounts of data to get a more problem-specific model. Since we already have large models like Stable Diffusion with its amazing capability, some people may wonder why ControlNet is still necessary. The motivation lies behind the answer to these questions. Can large models be applied to facilitate specific tasks? What kind of framework should we build to handle the wide range of problem conditions and user controls? After investigation, the author gives three value findings. First, the available data scale in a task-specific domain is not always as large as that in the general image text domain. Second, when image processing tasks are handled with data-driven solutions, large computation clusters are not always available. Third, various image processing problems have diverse forms of problem definition user controls, or image annotations. Hence, to achieve learned solutions in many tasks, end-to-end -end learning is indispensable. The essential structure of ControlNet is as the image shows. ControlNet manipulates the input conditions of neural network blocks to further control the overall behavior of an entire neural network. Giving a feature map X, a neural network block F with a set of parameters theta transforms X into another feature map Y. We lock all parameters with theta and then clone it into a trainable copy theta C. The copy theta C is trained with external condition vector C. The motivation for making such copies, rather than directly training the original weights, is to avoid overfitting when the dataset is small and to preserve the production-ready quality of large models learned from billions of images. The neural network blocks are connected by a unique type of convolution layer called zero convolution, which is one multiplied one convolution layer with both widths and biases initialized with zeros. Since both widths and biases of zero convolution are initialized with zeros, before any optimization, the output of the control net part is equal to zero. Thus, it will not cause any influence on the deep neural features. The author also provided a brief deduction about the gradient calculation of a zero convolution layer. We can see that also a zero convolution can cause the gradient on the feature term i become zero. The gradients of weights and biases are not influenced. As long as the feature i is non-zero, the weights will be optimized into a non-zero matrix in the first gradient descent iteration. And in this case, the feature term is input data or condition vectors sampled from datasets, which naturally ensures non-zero. In this way, 
the zero convolutions become a unique type of connection layer that progressively grow from zeros to optimize the parameters in a learned way. Stable diffusion is a large text-to-image diffusion model trained on billions of images. The model is essentially a unit with an encoder, a middle block, and a skip-connected decoder. Both the encoder and decoder have 12 blocks, including the middle block, resulting in 25 blocks in total. It uses 64 multiplied by 64 pre-processed images for input. To add the condition, the image-based conditions have also been converted to 64 multiplied by 64 feature space. The author uses ControlNet to create the trainable copy of the 12 encoding blocks and one middle block of stable diffusion. The outputs are added to the 12 skip connections and one middle block of the unit. The way to connect ControlNet to the stable diffusion model is computationally efficient. Since the original weights are locked, no gradient computation on the original encoder is needed for training. Since stable diffusion is a typical unit structure, this control net architecture can also be applied to other diffusion models. Giving a set of conditions including time step, text prompts, as well as task-specific conditions, image diffusion algorithms learn a network to predict the noise added to the noisy images. The overall learning objective of the entire diffusion model can be written like this, and it can be directly used in fine-tuning diffusion models. The author also discussed several strategies to improve the training. When the computation devices are limited, the author finds that disconnecting the link to the decoder, only connecting the middle block can improve the training speed. While in situations where both powerful computation clusters and the large datasets are available, we can first train control nets for a large enough number of iterations and then unlock all weights of stable diffusion and jointly train the entire model as a whole. Large diffusion models like stable diffusion can be augmented with control nets to enable various conditional inputs. The author showed a lot of examples in the experiment section. Here I only present some of them. For example, controlling stable diffusion with human scribbles, controlling stable diffusion with open pores. The author also did a comparison of depth-based control net to stable diffusion version 2 depth to image model. Here, the figure of apples shows a sudden convergence phenomena where the model suddenly can follow the input conditions. The figure of lions shows the result of canning edge-based control nets trained with different dataset skills. The figure on the right shows one limitation of control nets, which is when the semantic interpretation is wrong, the model may have difficulty generating correct content. There is also a very interesting and meaningful ablation study of why control nets use deep encoder on the official GitHub repo discussion sector, which I strongly recommend you to read. That's pretty much all of it. Thanks for watching and stay hungry.